Yo, ICE. The organization say they can't stand business with us any longer. What are you gonna do? We always knew we were gonna come to this point sooner or later. We have absolutely no option but to move forward. We'll have to set up our own distribution, manufacturing, run a totally independent organization and operation. <laughs> hey, uh, things a little slow since Warner put you down? <laughs> Guys look kind of broke! How about a lift? <laughs> I was born in New Jersey. I said it before, but I guess nobody heard me. My mother died young. No sisters or brothers, I was only son. When I was 12, my pops died too. What's a brother supposed to do? They sent me out west to live in my aunt. I guess they thought that was the best. But there was no love there. But growing with no moms, I guess I was prepared to live in a vacuum. The bedroom, the kitchen, the hall, the bathroom. I didn't leave home much. Didn't like LA. Didn't have no friends to trust. Got bused to a school. Blacks and whites, I guess the shit was cool. But by high school, I changed. Didn't want to bust. Didn't want to play the game. I walked to Crenshaw High. Shit was fly. That's how I'm living. I did three years in and made close friends. Having no love, my homies became my only. I was glad the family I never had, but I grew up fast. Okay. Got a girl in the 10th grade pregnant. So when was the house built? Huh? When was the house built? Oh, this house was about two years old. Uh, we bought it from a doctor. He had built it, but never lived in it. So who designed the house? I don't know. I don't know. Who made your... Uh... Oh, the, oh, the interior. Yeah. Me, me, you know. Uh, I, I basically like kind of, you know, like modern type furnishings and things like that, try to keep everything simple. So I, I'm not an interior decorator, but I know if you do everything in black and white and everything matches that you put in the house, right? This is a picture of Lil Ice when he was real little uh, with his hat on. How old is he now? One and a half. Where is he now? Out someplace, probably driving at a party, hanging out, robbing a store or something, I don't know. What, what kind of a father are you? I, I'm curious to know. Hey, I, I mean, I got a daughter right now who's like just went into high school, and I had her when I was in high school. I was in the 12th grade, and um, I just try to be a friend, you know? I mean, I don't lie about my past tour, and I try to just I think the main thing with parenting is communication. I think the key is to keep an open line of communication. Now, she knows I was bad. She knows I was in the gang. She knows I used to rob. She knows I've been to jail. She knows that. Doesn't mean that I want her to do that. She knows her uncles and all my friends is bad guys. A lot of them are still locked up. A lot of the, the, the guys that she remembers when she was little, she'll never see again because they're dead, you know? So dead how? They got killed out in the streets you know, hustling, doing crimes. So I try to guide her, you know, she wants to be an entertainer. She like wants to sing. I'm saying, why don't you be an entertainment lawyer? You know, I'm a regular parent, I guess, you know, why don't you go for the law? Is that so? so yeah. Me and her. Why, do, why, do you, why would you prefer that uh, above her being an uh, entertainer? Because anybody who, why would anybody want to get into a business where statistically it's impossible to be a success? You know, this is a dream. I'm very fortunate and lucky. But I can honestly say, and I'm not saying this egotistically, but you could interview eight out of ten musicians I haven't been even able to attain the little stuff that I got. You know, this might look grand to people. I mean, I'm just saying, on the scale of what's available on somebody like Michael Jackson, this is like about the size of Michael Jackson's closet, probably. Always go for something that's guaranteed, like a job, and then pursue your dream at the same time. But see, I didn't have anything really to fall back on with this. If, if I hadn't have made it like this, I would have been back out in the streets. Too many years I've seen my brothers die. And I can't say that it was really that fly. But I used to gang bang when I was younger. So it's really hard to tell a kid that he's going under. Right now we're working on the new I Body Count album. The album is called Born Dead. Uh, and we're just working on it, and it's it's good, and I hope people like it again, you know. Why is it called Born Dead? 
Well, it's, it's a kind of a, a song about, this title song, Born Dead, is it's just saying that, you know, being poor or being black or being on the, 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 the downside of the American system, you're not even expected to live past the age of 21. You know, if you stay here, I'm going to show you something. Just run, let me run over here right quick and I'll bring something back to you. Please, yeah. It's a, a plate. And it says, commemorating every black man who lives to see 21. Who made that? A lady sent it to me, one of my fans. And it's interesting, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of to think that somebody would even make this plate. It's like a way of saying, hey, you guys are like born dead. It's like you're born, your life expectancy is so limited. And it's sad. And this is the plate gave me the idea for this album. I've been sitting home trying to understand why a motherfucker can't get justice in America. 20 cops in the street, two go to jail. That don't add up to me. I didn't even go to college, you know what I'm saying? So I came up with this conclusion. Born dead stuff. Born yellow. Born brown. Born red. Born black. Yeah. No, that's not out. This is just a demo. You know, we're just messing around in the recording studio, coming up with ideas. <laughs> George right there, he's making all the decisions. He's your manager? Yeah. Manager, business partner, gardener, all more. <laughs> gardener too? Yeah. <laughs> he's outside of. Manicurist. Uh, so I'm gonna go trim those bushes in the front. Right. How did Warner communicate with you when they had to tell you that they couldn't release your next record? Well, the record was prepared to go. It was in the cover and everything was done. And I was out on tour with Body Count, and I got this phone call that was like, Body Count ain't coming out on Warner Brothers uh, because they don't like the album cover. I was like, I mean, I, yeah, I mean Ice T's album, your new album, Home Invasion, won't come out. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, it's the cover? What, do, what don't they like? And George was like, well, what do they like? And I was like, I'm like, but just give me a black album cover or something. Let's just go. You know, I wanted the record to come out. Mm -hmm. Then I came home and I just started thinking about it. And I just said, wrote him a letter and I was like... Hey, it was who? Who? Who did you write a letter? To Warner Brothers, oh. to Mo Austin and people up there. Yeah. And I was like, look, I am aware that you guys aren't the ones censoring me. It's coming in from higher up. You think so? Yeah, I know so. Like it, where from? Time in the corporate area, up high way above the record label level because the record label had already approved the album and it was pressed and it was ready to go mm. so somebody else called in and i just said look you know you can't seriously ask me to change this and change that and expect for me to feel comfortable you know i'm not gonna jeopardize my integrity why don't you just let me go you know let me go i'll be all right and i'll do it myself is it true that there was pressure from the uh unions of, of police officers well that was when cop killer was out there was pressure from them to pull the record but that pressure was off they were predicting new pressures if they had dropped this album they weren't worrying about any pressures at the time 
but it's okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm like I say, in the end, it's a blessing in disguise. Cause now I'm running my own business, and I much prefer this than being signed. But from now on, if any cops get in our way. <laughs> <laughs> One of the tracks the record opens with is uh, the track where, where you say from now on if any cops get in our way and then you go <laughs> Right. Well, it sounds well, good, but it sounds also a little theatrical to That's me. what it is. Theatrics. It's just a way of this saying, it's a way of us saying that if, if from now on there will be no retreats, if the cops get involved and they want to make some noise, then we'll make some noise with them. We're not pulling any records, you know. Now, whether we're physically going to get out there and shoot them, I don't know. But maybe, you know, if you're an Ice-T fan, you want to believe Ice-T will do that. You know, that's part of the, the, the luxury of being in the, a chair or some headphones on listening to it. But a lot of hardcore rap is theatrical, you know. It's, it's us playing the parts of somebody, so. I think a lot of people also take rap very literal and, and think it's all... You know, well, I don't really, care. I don't really. I don't think there's any problem if they think it literal, as long as they don't go out and try to reenact the, the, the stuff they hear on the records. You know, it's, there's people that think wrestling is real on TV. There's people that think that there's really a Terminator. There's a lot of people that are mentally incapable of understanding films and music. Uh, they really got shot in that movie, or whatever. But I think most people know, and there's never been any proof that this music leads to violence or harmed anybody so i don't even entertain those worries people have oh this record's gonna make someone prove it how many bullets can you back hold sucker from the hk the red dots in your dome from the light ray boom bam bust oh damn kid your head is a pile of pus i'm kicking up much stuff the brother you can't trust this is my hood my gold my turf my stash my grip whatever the hell is worth I don't need nobody coming in my territory trying to rip a brother off and kill a damn top Take a good story. So I understand you also have a, a, a weapon collection. Yeah, I got weapon collections. I like weapons. It's interesting, right? Because I just got finished doing interviews with Britain, and um, they always they they come on the phone. They're like, "What well, do you think it's right for you to show your guns on TV?" And I'm like, I said. But every time a, 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 a camera crew comes here from Europe, they're like, show us the guns, show us the guns. So then what happens is I end up looking like I'm showing guns off when I didn't really, they're locked up someplace right now. So I'm not going to show you. You're not going to show them. See, because what happens is then people think, well, I want to show you the guns. So you have to beg me or something, but I'm not going to do it anyhow. Uh -huh. Here goes a nifty little tool, an Australian gun it's called a gla and what makes this one so cool has a laser look into the camera right here. what do you like about that there eh? that looks cool don't it and wherever that dot goes the old bullet torino follows so these are some nifty little things you pick up on the way home from you know shopping glock but you need a license for that don't you well no when you buy it when you buy the gun you have to go through a, a period of time where they check you out and see if you, you know, got warrants or wanted by the police. Then they won't sell it to you. Hmm. So it takes 15 days. But once they, went, but you fill out 100 pages paper, and then once they give it to you, you're you're the registered owner to it, and that goes to Sacramento or wherever they mm -hmm. want monitoring. So what about you? I mean, you as far have... as a license, no. No, as far as me buying the guns, most of the times when I get them, I'll get them through my girlfriend, you know, Darlene. She buys them, so most of the guns are registered to her. Because you wouldn't be able to get one registered on your name? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we want to discuss that. <laughs> but, you know, I get, I get them, but they're legal. You know what I'm saying? It's, you can't get a license to carry one. See, the trick is you can't carry one on the street. If you had to carry, move this gun, you'd have to put it in the back a trunk of your car or either have it in your car and the bullets in the trunk. You can't roll with a gun loaded, but everybody does because, every, because you know, it's America. But, but is it just a toy for you? Because you're not gonna really going to use them, I assume. Well, no, I go to the range and I shoot it, so that makes it a toy, I guess. And I got, I mean, I got a, 
here to protect my house and stuff, but no, it's kind of just like toys and pieces of art, you know, things, you know, put on the wall. Ooh, a, a machine of murder. <laughs> This record by Jimi Hendrix. This is Jimi Hendrix, but it's me singing. Where is you? Where you going with that gun in your hand? I ain't no singer, but I can fake it. It's you. Where you going with that gun in your hand? Where you going? Where you going? Going out to shoot my old lady. You know I caught her messing around with another man. Going out to shoot my old lady. We can put this out if we decide to go pop. Good solo in here. Making a joke, you know. I said, do this when we go pop. You know, so yeah. we decided to go pop because everybody was like, yeah, you guys should do something that's radio playable and you can be huge. You know, I mean, I've been hearing this for years. Is that so? But I just don't like to. Yes, I did. I shot her. You know, I caught that girl messing around town. I think I might have good, and I shot her. 